Hey, Eagle Run 2-3 here. We are back visiting about the 8.6 blackout problem that I had. And I, I've learned I've learned a lot. I uh, read through your comments. Uh, I'm going to share a couple of those here with you um, at first. But the first thing I want to do is just talk about this H110 and uh, talk about case capacity. There's no specific information from Hodgdon. I was unable to get them on the phone to see if they had a comment on this. But from, from what I can tell in reading on a couple of forums, there is a thought that H110 specifically enjoys a larger fill capacity. Now, if you're not a reloader, it, it may, you may not really think too much about like what's actually going on inside of your case here. It is important though, and I've learned a lot about that. Obviously, I learned the, the bad side of it, but... Um, it's, it's something that I was aware of, but it's not something that I considered when I chose this powder. Uh, I had seen that several other people had had success with it, and it was one I was just kind of trying out, and I thought that I had an idea about what I wanted to do. For the record, three rounds went off great. They were subsonic. Uh, I don't have velocity data on those, but um, a lot of people are saying that 15, 15, 5 was a good solid sub round, and I know people who still shoot that. Um, it just on that, uh, that particular one did not work for me, uh, and kind of blew up on us. But let's talk about this case again. This is a 65308 case. This specific one here uh, is made by Gorilla and it weighs 156.6 grains. I went ahead and weighed it in grains here so we can compare everything. And then here in my a uh, little pan, you can see that it is not very much powder. That is what 15 grains of powder looks like. Um, and you can imagine that does not fill up the case very much. Um, in this case right here, this is a uh, Q brass and it weighs quite a bit less. Uh, this Gorilla Brass is Starline and the Q brass is from Hornady. So these are both factory, we'll call them factory, even though it's a boutique factory. These are both from Gorilla. Originally, they were using Q brass from Hornady. This one weighs 142 grains, which is quite a bit less. But what matters is what we're putting in there and what that fill capacity is. Now, with 15 grains of powder, it is a 49.5% fill capacity. So just under 50%. And that means technically, I could have double charged this. And we're going to take a look at what that looks like here in just a second. So we have an empty case here. Nothing inside. I'm going to go ahead and put 15 grains in here and see if we can get a light down in there for you to see what it looks like. All right, so there we are with uh, 15 grains of powder. You can tell there is quite a bit of open space. Uh, it would look about like that loaded. So let's see if we can look what that would look like down inside the case. So you can see that's going down in there quite a bit. Uh, it would be right about right there. So that's taking actually quite a bit of our case capacity. So in this case right here that is uh, empty, we are going to put 30 grains of powder in here. Okay, so here is what 30 grains of powder looks like in the pan. It's exactly 30 on the dot, and we're going to put that into our empty case. Okay, now technically... We are under 100% fill capacity, but you can tell. Let's see if I can put those right next to each other for you. Can you see down in there? The one on the right is noticeably fuller than the one on the left. Now, my question was, if I were to seat this bullet, would I have felt the crunch of a compressed load? And the answer is no, I would not have. So it is entirely possible that I simply had a double charge. Now, reloading on a progressive machine like my Dillon 550, uh, there is a bit of a concern. Typically, I am not doing a load where a double charge is possible. This is the first time that a double charge has been possible. Um, when I'm reloading 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm running like 40 something grains of 6.5 stable and 
that fills the case up enough that 80 grains of steel wall would not fit in the case. It would spill out all over the machine if I were to double charge. And then I also have um, been re reloading nine millimeter for the longest amount of time. And it's like 5.4 grains of CFE pistol and the nine millimeter case uh, would not hold uh, 10 point, well, almost 11 grains of powder would not fit into a, 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 the nine millimeter case. You would definitely notice when you tried to put a bullet in there. So as an experiment for me, I wanted to see, I guess I thought it would be a little more full than that. And I thought I could eliminate the fact that I had a double charge. So I printed out some comments here that I just wanted to go, kind of go over with you guys. It brings up a couple of good points. Um, I, I love you guys in the comments, you know, leaving quality comments that are, that are super helpful. And um, no, the number one thing that I learned is that it's just simply not worth it to shoot, to, for me to let anyone else shoot my loads. So let's start here at the top. James Pollard, he comments on a lot of videos. An over or an undercharge um, could have been the case. He also wanted to comment on the extractor and that molten. What I, I didn't really think it was molten. I just kind of threw that out there. But how that brass was shoved down in there, he thinks that it, it went behind the extractor when it was bent up, that that brass was able to shoot down in there. And that explains how the brass got inside the bolt. Um, so I agree with him on that. Um, the next thing is from Dave Strohmeyer, great channel as well. Um, out of battery would have generally caused the case to rupture. His guess is an overpressure um, that could have been caused by many factors, and he's glad no one was injured. Thankfully, no one was injured. Spy Sweeper says, don't let anyone shoot your reloads. He never lets anyone shoot his reloads, and he only shoots them in his own gun. Solid advice. Um, the reloads are optimized for your gun. That's why you're testing them. And I was definitely caught up in the excitement of shooting with a subscriber. Um, shooting uh, suppressed reloads that I'd worked on, all those excitement things. Um, playing with someone else's 8.6 build, that's the first 8.6 build I've seen that was not mine. Um, so it, there was there was a lot going on and I just, I let that get past me and, and I shouldn't have done that. Nito from AP 2020, he's done a lot of research um, even last summer on 8.6 Blackout. Um, he ran the numbers on quick loads and he suspects it was a possibility that it was double charged. Uh, says, let this be a lesson to all in reloading. My buddy Nate, who also has quick loads, him and I have been working together on a lot of this stuff. Um, he says that it was around 110 to 120 PSI that went off in that chamber, which is well above uh, what the barrels and things are rated for. So um, under advisement of several people in the comments and just out of an abundance of caution between me and Carl, um, we're going to get his barrel taken off of that upper um, send it back into Faxon. Uh, if I need to, um, if I need to replace his with mine, I've got one right here, and then I can also get my hands on another one for him if there's any damage to the barrel. So I might just swap my barrel on his so that um, so that his gun is operational. We we have our JP bolt that just came in as well. Uh, we'll probably take that apart and look at it here a little bit, and then I ordered some some new pens and, and stuff like that just so that everything is all brand new. And here's a comment from Carl. It was his gun. He says, it was great to meet up. Um, he let me know where the magazine was from. I've already, I got one ordered. I, I, there was a really cool Texas magazine. Uh, it's got the Texas flag um, painted on it. And so I'm, I got him a new uh, mag coming as well. And he's going to appreciate the upgrade from JP high pressure bolt. So um, I do have some concerns about head spacing this, um, which we'll probably talk about in another video. Um, I borrowed go no go gauges from Gorilla when I built my Faxon. Also it was Faxon bolt, Faxon barrel. I recommended checking it with a head space as well. So I probably will try to head space this um, to make sure this bolt is good to go. So we'll work on that as well. And then Eric Castro says, that he's hoping that the lugs on the barrel are fine. Um, again, out of an abundance of caution, we're gonna get that barrel looked at. And he's also floating the possibility, most people thought it was an overcharge because that probably makes the most amount of sense. This whole flash over and detonate thing, my next two comments from Eric and from I Watched What, they both said that the undercharge is possible. Eric says that having a high case capacity uh, is a better way to kind of keep your, your standard deviations, um, keep your numbers consistent. That way your powder's not laying flat on the bottom. So if you think about having this case half full, 
when you turn it over into the gun, your powder is, you know, going to be in the half full range this way as well. And so when that primer goes off, it actually shoots over, potentially shoots over the top of the powder and gives you a way different burn than if the powder was burning, you know, from the bottom to the top. So it, it is a different dynamic. And I guess I still think that that's a possibility. I was so careful, guys. I knew that I was going to be shooting this, you know, uh, a new load and I went very slow. I only did five at a time. Um, I feel like I looked down there on every single one of them. I've got a light on top of my Dylan. I can see right in that case. And I, I guess I just missed it. I don't know. Just, uh, just a reminder, the three loads before this all went off fine. They were all subsonic. Uh, they, they sounded great. Uh, I do have some video of that. That, uh, that I'll share with you guys here when I, when I post that video of, of what was supposed to happen on that day. Um, and then Constitutionalist. Now he comments on a lot of my videos. Seems like a, seems like a smart guy, but um, he is giving me a hard time in a good way. Uh, I can take this constructive criticism, but he says, I don't want to criticize you, but <laughs> I'm going to criticize you, which is fine. I'm, I'm good, guys. Um, this is why loading for a new caliber is dangerous. It's possible that it dropped twice. I should have caught that. Now, one check that I will do in the future here, because this scared my pants off here. Um, I When I have a new load, especially on ladder testing and load development, when I'm done, I'm going to weigh the finished cartridge and make sure that they're all real close to exactly the same, which would indicate that the case... Typically, I load the same cases. Now, there's a big variance between the weight of those two cases I just showed you typically load the same cases that would have a similar weight. And if there's anything that doesn't look right, I can just pull the bullet. I've got the bullet puller set up. I can just yank it out, double check, make sure it's all good to go. I'm, I'm gonna up my diligency on that. I wanted to point out that the most of the headspace has been done in regard to the Faxon bolt and you don't need to get the entire carrier. You can just get a bolt from Faxon. Now he's talking about a Faxon bolt, but this was actually an aero precision bolt and bolt carrier group. Headspace problem will not be avoided. See, a couple people thought that there's a headspace issue, which if you'll remember my first, this first round of, of, of load here that I sent, that I was planning on shooting, um, it was 14.7, so even less. I'm glad I did not shoot these. Um, these will be pulled and we're gonna weigh them as well. But these would not chamber in his gun. Um, the bolt would not close on them and it does close in my gun and it, it does plunk in my barrel. So that potentially speaks to a headspace issue. I don't, I don't, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. I, I don't have that figured out. Uh, he goes on to say, think twice about letting people shoot your loads. He says that he does not buy into the powder laying on the bottom of the case on a full moon theory. <laughs> he thinks that I double charged it, which it is likely, um, likely. I, I want to say that I was so careful that I feel like I can fully eliminate the fact that I double charged it, but there's always, I mean, there's, even if I'm 99% sure, you know, I, I don't know why I, I would like to say I'm a hundred percent sure, but obviously this happened. So there has to be some percentage in there of my, of my doubt, but thankfully nobody got hurt. Inspect everything before you put that gun back together. Yes, sir. I will. And then there was one last comment, which was just left a couple of hours ago. And it is a guy who has commented on several videos before, and he's kind of been giving me a hard time. Uh, he says, watching my channel is like watching a train wreck, which, um, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching this train wreck. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I have presented myself to you guys as an expert, um, that is not my intention. I, if you look at the banner of this channel, it says learning to reload from zero. Um, I'm not a self-taught reloader. Uh, I've learned from YouTube, but more importantly, there's four or five guys that I talk to on the regularly that have kind of mentored me through this process. Um, and they did all say to be careful and don't let anyone shoot your loads. And I did not follow their advice. So, um, I don't have bad mentors. I, I do, I do have, uh, some good mentors, but, uh, he's good. Just giving me a hard time in general because, you know, I made the mistake early on of the DPMS high versus low. And he was critical of that saying, I don't do my research. And, and I do jump into things sometimes and don't do my research, but uh, uh, there's just things that get missed. And I 
show you guys everything on this channel. Um, I very easily, uh, and maybe I should have, just swept this under the rug and only Carl and I would have known about it. I guess I'm showing it to you um, not for views or anything. I, I guess I'm just showing it to you because this is what happened and my channel is a vlog of what I'm doing and this happened. And if, if it helps someone else, then great. I, I would love for us all to not blow up any guns. And so if I did it and that saved someone else from doing it, then I guess that's a good thing. I can accept his criticism as well. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not upset about it. You, you guys can, it's a free country. You can write whatever you want to. I posted it, so I'm open to the criticism. I think maybe he doesn't, I think maybe he doesn't understand that like I'm, uh, I'm trying to be an advocate of reloading and the 86 blackout and all of those things. And so if it happened to me, you know, this could happen to someone else and I just I'm I'm just sharing my journey with you guys. Uh I hope you guys appreciate the transparency and uh you can probably trust that I'm not sweeping things under the rug if I was willing to, you know, show you what was a bad day. Uh It's really funny cuz you guys have been in a car wreck before. I'm sure most of us have been in at least a fender bender. I feel like when the next time you're driving, you feel like everything's going to hit you. Uh, I was definitely like that for a couple of days. Uh, I not I haven't actually gone shooting since that happened. Uh, I, I'm not going to be scared to pull the trigger, but I definitely am. I definitely am reapproaching everything with those red flags and the abundance of caution that you guys are recommending in the comments. So I hear you. I appreciate it. Um, one of the next videos, we're going to take apart those rounds, and then we are checking with Aero Precision to see. I don't expect them to warranty this because it, you know it was my fault, but if if they warranty it or if they give me an option to buy a new one, I, I could definitely do that as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking about our uh, 8.6 problems here, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.